on IWTV News. Reavers reeling them in. Signing day at Iowa Western. Big Blue with another big haul. How about a new canvas in the fall? That's right, friends, it's in the works and already in use. Just about time to step up to the plate. The baseball season in the on-deck circle. Everybody say amen. Who's headed to the show? The Reaver wrestling team sends how many? Say what? From the campus of Iowa Western, you're watching IWTV News. Hello and welcome to IWTV News. I'm JJ Davis. Well, another National Signing Day has come along here in Reaver country. Now, you'd think with the success of the football team, it'd be a cinch, right? It'd be a snap, right? Well, yes and no, according to the head coach, Stroh. Another signing day has come and gone, and the Reavers here catching yet another Graphic Edge Bowl win. We're, we're all over, you know, all over the, obviously the state and then the bordering states and in Georgia and Florida. And, um, you know, really what we try to do is try to find the right fits. Starting with the home state of Iowa, Big Blue reels in Josh Simmons, a six foot, 200 pound all state receiver from nearby Lewis Central. We always want to try to keep the Council Bluffs kids here. I think he fits what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, he's going to be, you know, a, a kid that we're expecting to come in and play, you know, in the state at wide receiver. Kids in Iowa get a lot of recruiting action, you know, and they're not a lot of junior college um, kids as far as academically, so they got options. Um, you know, you start Jason Murray, uh, was a part of a Dowling team. You know, I think he played on three straight state championships and as a running back. and. Um, who's really, really talented. Um, you know, Dontrell Womax out of Davenport Central, who's really talented running back linebacker, uh, who we're projecting as a linebacker is going to do good things. Uh, Keegan Simmons was on the Prairie team that won the state championship um, as well, that I think is really good. And speaking of really good, the number one O lineman in Nebraska, according to one recruiting website, Makai Butler from Omaha North is headed to Reaver Country. I have a lot of respect for Larry Martin and what he does at Omaha North, and and uh, so we have a good relationship there, and um, he knows what we're looking for and, and knows how we treat our kids and, and help them get to the next level. And you know, again, you come from a disciplined program. Um, they're tough. They're physical. Uh, they can be coached hard and. Um, so anytime we can get kids like that, I think are our benefit. The neat thing is, is Treasure Coast area in Florida. Um, there's a newspaper writer down there that's at Iowa Western cleaned house in the Treasure Coast with, you know, we got three kids out of there. I think it was one fourth of the all area team that we signed on defense was is coming to Iowa Western. And then we signed two really good players out of Illinois, you know, um, you know, with Kobe Rios as an offensive lineman who had, was committed to an FCS school and decided he wanted to go the junior college route. And then a defensive lineman, Isaiah Coe, um, out, of, out of Illinois as well, who had a lot of in interest. There's talented kids across the country and, and every any, any coach is gonna say they're really excited about their class. Um, but what I think we've done a really good job of is try to get, um, you know, more information about the kid and what type of kid he is and you know, how competitive he is, you know, how hard he's going to work. Is he going to do what we're asking him to do or, we, or do we always got to have a thumb on him? And, and we're just trying to get the right fits now with the program where the state of our program is. One, the program sells itself as that kids are interested and would love to come here. Um, now with the success, some kids are a little bit shied away that are they going to be able to play here? You know, so that's that's the recruiting tactics that other people are using and trying to use against us that, you know, you're going to go there and not going to play or you're going to redshirt. Your coach don't lose so much in the him. You can run by him. It doesn't get any easier necessarily because the second we're on a guy, that means other schools are going to be on them too. And so it's not, you know, there's no more of the, we're going to sneak in and get this kid because we really like him uh, with the social media presence. And as soon as a kid posts out there that he got an offer or, or visited Iowa Western, you know, there's uh, numerous other schools that are going to hit him up. And as always, it's hit or miss when it comes to recruiting. But Iowa Western with six 10 win seasons in the first decade of the program has had more hits than misses. Isn't that the truth? Now, when it's all said and done, 
things work out for everybody. I mean, the coaches, the players, the team, everybody benefits. Success in the classroom, in the win-loss column, all translates to getting to that next level. And isn't that what most of the players have come here for? Family on three, family on three, one, two, three. Family. In all, 26 players so far are headed to four-year schools. Iowa Western's all-time single-season leader in tackles, Willie O'Hara here, has been invited to walk on at Iowa. Eddie Ogamba, kicking the game winner in the Unidome, will do the same at Iowa State. Honorable mention All-American D-tackle at Lias Bell has signed on to take his wrecking ball to Houston. Opportunity that's there, you know what I mean? Their academic support system was really good. My graduation plan was really good and it was on track for me and my parents thought so too because he also talked to my mother and, you know, just good football. I just fell in love with the place. Um, the coach there, they care about their athletes, their football players. Um, they have a great facility, they have a great program there and it's a winning program. Whatever it takes, whatever we got to do to get the victory. I'm definitely going to remember the coaches, um, the players, the relationship I was able to build here as a school, the teachers for helping me out. A lesson, a lesson to never like give up, you know, because there was times where it could make you or break you here and at this level. And just a lesson to never give up, you know, trust, trust the process. I had to learn how to do that here because it wasn't easy for me, so. And so they come and they go. Lessons learned both on and off the field. Yet another reason champions, winners, do play in Reaver country. And now 26 Reavers set to move on to four-year schools. Now of those 26, 13 headed to the football bowl subdivision institution. Of that, six will play for Power 5 schools. That being what, the SEC, the Big Ten, the ACC, the Pac-12, and the Big 12. So, a lot of impressive coming and goings at Iowa Western. And you know what? We wouldn't have it any other way. And they will soon be playing outside. The boys of summer ready to step into the box for another trip to Grand Junction. But next time, Showtime at the Arts Center. A taste of Mardi Gras when we come back. From the campus of Iowa Western, this is IWTV News. Center, opening summer of 2019, Iowa Western. Times are a-changing, and you better keep up or you'll get left behind. And so it goes at Iowa Western. Now, as far as the business of the school is concerned, as we all know, it goes through what's called the Rock Portal. But for the students, well, things are about to change in the fall. Here's IWTV student E.J. Wren. Moodle's days are numbered. All students will be using Canvas in the fall of 2019. It's different from, it's the same thing as Rock, but it's different from Moodle. So Rock is basically our online campus and we're switching what's called LMSs. And LM, the LMS, we were using Moodle and now we're using Canvas. Since it just came out, I don't have too much experience with it. I've run the basic tutorial so I could help other students with it if they come and ask, but that's really it. 
One thing I like about, I just discovered this feature is that you can put in like um, grades for an assignment that hasn't came up yet and then you can see what your grade would be if you did get that grade for that assignment. My online students seem to really like it. Uh, they, it's more user friendly for them. Uh, they like the fact that they can see their grades. Um, they don't like the number of emails that they get from Canvas. Canvas sends out a lot of emails, but they do like things like it sends them reminders when assignments are due because I've set up a calendar in my online class for them. Yeah, I get a lot of notifications from it on my phone. Sometimes too much, but you can edit the notifications. Well, we're just in the pilot, so Number one, learning management systems are really expensive, and so we spent the last year as an institution trying to figure out which one was the best for our institution. This may only be the pilot stage. However, some students are already used to the change. I think that generally students are going to react in a positive way to Canvas. I know that there are a lot of students who don't particularly love change. I think that's something that's going to be a little bit of a barrier, but once they overcome that um, change aspect of it, I think um, Canvas is going to be something that's going to be very helpful for us. I am really happy about switching. I think that there will be some growing pains because no one knows how to use Canvas, but in the end, I think it's a better LMS for not just faculty, but for students. Students seem to be responding well to Canvas. Hopefully this continues. With your IWTV News, I'm E.J. Wren. Thanks, E.J. Now how about this? Mardi Gras, baby? Well, kinda. How about a party in the Arts Center? And you know, with all this freezing cold weather we've been having, it's just what the doctor ordered. Here's IWTV student Devin Holcomb. As the 2019 National Performances continues at Iowa Western's Arts Center, multiple Grammy Award winner Terrence Asimian steps on the stage. Very cool is our music, and uh, you know, throughout the years, the music has changed, like all styles of music. The earliest form of this music was a style called the Jure which was just using your voice, clapping your hands, and stomping your feet before the accordion and all the other instruments made its way into the music. And then the electric instruments came during the 40s, late 40s, and a little blues and jazz was mixed in there. Then we had a little rock and roll mixed in there, you know, with Clifton Chenier, and then now you have the youth just totally taking over the music, you know, they've taken ownership and then adding like some sounds of today, some hip hop, a little rap, you know, into it. So the, the tradition of evolution in the music continues. We have recordings that goes from back, back from the 20s until now, you know, and, and if you listen to those recordings and work your way to, the, to today, you'll see that the most traditional thing about our music is that it evolves and many people come excited to experience the culture from the music. Well, we're here for the Cajun concert. <laughs> and we actually have a, a subscription to uh, some of the shows. And uh, I don't know, this one sounds exciting. Uh, I'm expecting kind of like Cajun type music, which we love, lively, peppy, happy music. That's what we like, happy music. kind of music, we're kind of fans of this type of music. We've been to New Orleans several times and Mardi Gras Festival, we're right in, right in step with it. <laughs> he always likes that music. We were at Silver Dollar City one year and they had Zedico music and he got up on stage and danced with them because <laughs> he really enjoyed it. We do a variety of different things, you know, and uh, we get different audiences in different places and different different venues, you know. So we have to we have to kind of, you know, gauge the crowd, I guess you could say, before we before I decide on what what we're gonna play that night. You know, it's a way to connect them with the culture because it is not only Louisiana history, 
and culture, but it's American history and culture. For more information on the next show at Iowa Wesson's Art Center, visit artcenter.iwcc.edu. With your IWTV News, I'm Devin Holcomb. Thanks, Devin. Who? How many? The Iowa Western Wrestling Team qualifies for nationals. Who's in? Who's out? Batter up! Play ball! Thank heavens, there's hope on the horizon. Baseball, baby! After the break. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. The basketball season's winding down. The Iowa Western men are ready to take that next step. Now, let's be honest, it's been a bumpy ride this year, but there's still time to make it all better, starting with Central CC. Here's IWTV student Brian Tesmer. Reavers welcome Central to Reaver Arena. First half, Manny Ugbo powers his way inside for an easy two. Then, Parker Hazen gets the inside shot, and the home team trails by two. Iowa Western goes on a 25-13 run. Caleb Huffman with three of his game high, 22. Then Isaiah Newey ends the half with this tough shot. Big Blue storms in the locker room up 39 to 27. Second half, Christian Bentley gets the easy scoop and score. Reavers shoot over 57%. Iowa Western rolls by Central 93 to 57. Well, I mean, I think we outpersonnel them. There's no question about that. And, and, you know, we knew that going in. We talked about, you know, respecting the game, respect your opponent, and, and try to get, you know, the most out of it that we could. And I have a lot of respect for Jerry Dryman and what he does at Central, and, and he's had some quality teams in the past. It's just this has been a tough year for them. Uh, I thought we all played well tonight as a team, and we got to get our uh, – we got to get our bench in, so that was fun. And watch like people who don't play as much. And I, I think we just needed that win tonight. I think we executed the play very well. We had a high advantage uh, in the pain. We rebounded the ball very well. And we had a lot of energy coming from the bench too. So it was a great win. Uh, we really only had a couple guys in double figures tonight. Everybody touched and shared the ball. Guys that you know haven't gotten a lot of playing time were able to get some tonight and uh, all valued and, and, and played their minutes. Iowa Western then hits the road. The Reavers lose at Northeastern 72 to 80. Big Blue has dropped three of its last five. For IWTV Sports, I'm Brian Tesmer. Thanks, Brian. Now turning to baseball. That's right, baseball, baby, thank heavens. Another year, another trip to Grand Junction for the Reavers. I mean, a new locker room, a new team. What can we expect in 2019? The Iowa Western baseball team comes out swinging. The Reavers come in off a 54-7 and record, as well as another trip to the Juco World Series. We feature 27 freshmen and 12 sophomores. I look for, for sophomores as part of the deal of being Sophomores here for Iowa Western baseball is is the leadership side, uh, something that they need to continue to work on uh, for when they leave here and go somewhere else and, and go on to life is is the leadership skills. It's just it's just to take every game day by day and you know take our wins and you know I think the important thing is is we can't look past any teams because you know it's baseball you know, anybody can win um, and so I think we just gotta win. Every single game, every single pitch, every single at bat, and you know, hopefully at the end of the day, you know, I believe in our work ethic and our, the guys we got on our team. Like we could definitely make a run for this thing. I just want to kind of, for sure, get back to where we were last year and try and go a little further with that. I mean, the experience was great in Grand Junction, but to be able to come out with a few more and do a little more, that would be one of my expectations for the year. Well, we're young this year, um, as Mason said. Um, Came up short last year, it was tough. We had a great team. 
we had the talent to go all the way, but you know, this year, I mean, we got a whole new team, a whole new style of play. Um, I mean, we're going to go out there and do our thing every day, and I think that once we get there, we just got to be a little more prepared. You can't come out as, I mean, we didn't come out as sloppy, but we just, I feel like we got woken up after our first loss there. And this year, hopefully, when we get there, um, we'll be able to get a head start on that. I mean, I think the goal that, that I set uh, a long time ago here was was to get to a national championship game. Uh, and if you get to a national championship game, then anything can happen. And, you know, I, I think sometimes you probably have to, to veer off that as like the, the total complete mindset. And you have to adjust to what you have. I mean, you know, your roster changes over. Uh, every year, you know, with just freshmen and sophomores. So, I mean, there, there's, it's a revolving door. The Reavers are ranked fourth in the preseason poll. Iowa Weston will be looking to make its 19th appearance in the College World Series. Big Blue opens its season on the road February 22nd at Northeastern Oklahoma A&M. For IWTV Sports, along with Chris Hansen, I'm Terry Lomas. Next to the women, looking to take that next step in the circle. The Iowa Western softball team is on the cusp of something special. Reaver softball, opening new doors, Iowa Western looks to build off a 44-9 season. Big Blue's last trip to Nationals, 2013. We have uh, six returners, so we have 11 new faces. Um, 10 of them are freshmen and seven of them are sophomores. I think offensively, uh, we have a lot more um, firepower than we've had before, and then obviously with 11 new faces and only six returners, um, it's going to be a slow start to the season. The best leader that I can be to this year coming in and getting our freshmen there as fast as we were expected to get there. Last year's team was amazing in so many different aspects, um, defensively, offensively, and the chemistry of the team all the way throughout, just having really strong hitters, confident players. My teammates especially have encouraged me to kind of push myself to be better. Um, I like to put in work for my team. That has been the main thing. You know, hitting 327 last season was all due to my teammates. I've always wanted to play here. This like environment has been the best team I've been on. So um, Lily Gregory um, was a four hitter, five hitter for us last year. She was a middle of the lineup hitter um, and she has that um, physical ability to do that. That's where you would normally put a player like that. Um, but she just gets on base um, at an extremely high rate and we have a lot of kids that have um, power. So we're going to flip her to being leadoff this year. And in our first game, she hit 500, or our first two games, she hit 500. I think it's all really mental. It's going out there and having the confidence immediately. We are all good enough to um, be really, really good. And we just have to believe in ourselves. The team has individual goals, but I think that our group as a whole um, has just been really working together to to accomplish the big goal at hand, um, which is to make it to the national tournament. And I think, I mean, that's the big goal is to make the national tournament. So we work day in and day out to try to get there. I gave us just an insane schedule from a, winning games is great. Um, getting yourself better and pushing yourself each day against better competition was where we wanted to go. I think by um, late March, early April, we'll start playing at a high level. The Reavers' journey towards a regional title begins with an 0-2 start in 2019. Iowa Western is on the road for their first six games of the season. IDEP is back home at the Reavers Sports Complex, Saturday, February 23rd, against Western Nebraska. For IWTV Sports, I'm Riley Teton, along with Adam Ireland. Thanks, you guys. And finally, the results are in, and the Reaver wrestling team at the Natty Qualifier on the other side. Because of you, I feel not alone in this world. And you let me know that it only takes one person to make you feel wanted. Okay, it's decision time. I want flexibility, more doing, hands-on experience, and working sooner. 
I gotta make a choice. I wanna get started, now. Find your path at iwcc.edu and get hands-on real-world experience. Start now at Iowa Western. It's crunch time for the Iowa Western wrestling team. This is it. There is, as they say, no tomorrow. The national qualifying tournament is in the books. So how many Reavers will hit the mats at nationals in a couple of weeks? And of course, it takes place at the Mid-America Center. How about nine out of 10? That's pretty good. 125 pounder Isaac Garcia takes fourth at the ICCAC tournament and wins his golden ticket to nationals. Jacob Ruiz gets in by virtue of his third place finish. 141, Gat Usman is in. So is Melvin Hernandez at 149. All-American football player Michael Zachary loses by a point in the final, but still punches his ticket at 157. Olin Bratton loses in the championship match as well, but Bratton is in at the MAC. Ditto for Tim Barr at 184, Ethan Poppy at 197, and Cortez Woods makes it to the finals and in the process qualifies for the national tournament as well. Nine out of ten, seven freshmen and just two sophomores. Nine out of ten is, is, is good. I mean, obviously you want to be perfect, but uh, uh, it's a numbers game come, come nationals, so we, we got the numbers in to put up team points. The guys are pretty pretty beat up. Our qualifier is pretty tough. Uh, and we also went in with half our lineup with injuries. Uh, so I think the key for us right now is to get healthy. The talent is there for us. Um, it's freshman loaded. So the, the, the freshmen make silly mistakes sometimes, which is what cost us matches early on in, in, in the conference tournament or the qualifier this weekend. I, I feel like we're the best team in the conference. It's just a matter of not making silly mistakes that cost us matches. And those next matches will be at the Natty Tournament Friday, March 1st and Saturday, March 2nd at the Mid-America Center. And as usual, yours truly will be there and have all the action on the next IW TV News. Okie dokie. We had everything this week. What, signing day stuff? We had music and stuff. We had, what, basketball and stuff? Baseball, softball, wrestling and stuff? I mean, what will next week bring? <laughs> but what do the old coaches say? We just like to take it one game, one week at a time. And so for this latest edition of IWTV News, I'm J.J. Davis, and as always, I'll see you around campus. IWTV is online. Like us, follow us, watch us.